In this unit, we're going to look at view properties. Now, we have covered some of these in earlier units, but it's such an important topic that I think it's worth recapping and reviewing the most commonly used view properties. So remember in Revit, if you select an element, let's take this door here, you will get the properties for that element, in this case, the double doors. However, if you have no object selected in the current view, you will always get the properties of the view itself. Now, some of these are repeated down on the view control bar, and we've had a look at a couple of these before, view scale, uh, detail level. We'll cover those very briefly again in this unit, and we'll introduce some new ones. Now, if I just scroll down slowly down the list here of the instance parameters, the instance properties for the view, you can see that it's quite a long list. Now, some of these are for more advanced use of Revit, so I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to pick half a dozen or so of the most commonly used ones. So I'm going to start with view scale. We have looked at that before, but let's just have a very quick recap. Remember, the scale of the view at which you want it to be printed out at is set at a view level, so i.e. make the view active and then set its scale here, either on the view control bar or in the properties palette. So let's take a look at it up here. Click in there, click the little drop down and select the scale you want. Now remember when we looked at view scales in more detail in a previous unit, we talked about how Revit automatically um, maintains the size difference between the model elements and the annotation elements such as the tag here. So if, for example, I drop the scale of this view to 1 to 200, you'll see the tags change size in relation to the model. These will be an actual fixed size. So let's say that's 2.5 mil text. That's still 2.5 mil when it's printed out. It's just the model's got smaller. I can demonstrate that um, a little bit more if I switch to a sheet view. So that plan it's been put onto a sheet. So there's the plan at 1 to 200. We can see the, the tags there, the window numbers. If I just quickly go back to the plan, let's change that, let's say 1 to 50. Now it looks like the tags have got a lot smaller, but if we switch back quickly to the sheet view, those tags there, that text is actually the same size as it was before, it's just the model is being displayed at a larger scale, hence that size differential between the two. So that's view scale. The next view property we're going to take a look at is display model. Now I'm going to give you a, a quick example of when you would use this. So here's our simple model. I'm just going to create a quick section through the model. Now in the next module on the course, I'm going to take you through detailing and annotation and display model is very much connected to detailing. So I'm just going to switch to section there. Let's just increase the detail level. So let's say we want to start detailing our model here. Uh, we want to actually add brick courses onto this section. Now, so don't worry about the tools I'm going to use now because I will be taking you through these in detail in the next module. But let's just put on um, some brickwork in section. Now, these are 2D details I'm applying here. Now, what I've actually done is superimposed or overlaid a 2D detail on top of the 3D model in this view. You can see it's a little bit confusing as to which is the original 3D model and which is the 2D detail. And this is where display model comes into its own. So by default, it's set to normal. The model is displayed normally. If, however, if I hit the little drop down, there are a total of three options there. We can display in half tone and we can put do not display on. So I switch to half tone. All the model elements now you can see are in a light half tone gray. Makes it very easy to see 
the 2D details that we're adding. So this would enable us to, to fully detail this section. We could add the insulation in, the brickwork on the outside, um, wall plates and other detail items like that. And then when we're finished, we may want to actually, in this particular view, turn off the model itself and just be left with the details that we've built up. And in that case, we would then switch that to do not display. And we'd just be left with the detail items. You can use that in call outs, plans, sections, elevations, um, a number of different view types. So by default, the model is displayed normally in the view. However, you can put it to one of those two other options to better help you detail and display your particular view. The next view property we'll look at is detail level. Now we did have a distinct unit on detail level, but just a very quick recap here. Remember, there are three levels of detail hardwired into Revit, coarse, medium or fine. You can't change the number of detail levels, you can't add to those, you can't take away. However, with component families, you can, using the family editor, determine what exactly is shown at each of those detail levels. So, for example, here's one of the door families, a generic door fam families that ship with Revit. So at a fine level of detail, that's what you actually see in plan. Go down to medium. Now they, Autodesk, haven't modeled it any differently between fine and medium. But if we go down to coarse, it gets a lot more simplistic. And what you see there for that door is just down to how Autodesk have modeled it. If you were authoring your own BIM components, you get to decide exactly what is shown at each of those detail levels. It's almost like having um, the possibility of three different components all in the same family. And then when the user switches between these three detail levels, that's when it displays um, the detail and the geometry according to how it's been modeled. So again, up on the properties palette, detail level exactly the same, the three options there. Um, with this one, it's probably easier to change it down on the view control bar, uh, but it's totally up to you. Visibility and graphic overrides are the next view property we're going to look at. So we've got a button there to edit. You'll remember this panel from a previous unit. So this is where we control how each element in the view is displayed. So remember our list of categories, our top level categories here. Remember we we can't add to this list, we can't change these, we can't edit the names. These are hardwired into the Revit system. We've got model categories, annotation categories, and then in the previous unit, we actually went through all the different tabs along the top and what we might expect to see here. Now, this is one uh, view property where I would suggest you learn the keyboard shortcut for it. You can either do VV or VG on your keyboard. Remember, Revit keyboard shortcuts are always two letters. You don't have to press enter after it. As soon as you put the second letter in on your keyboard, Revit will activate it. So if I just do that now, I'm just gonna press VV twice on my keyboard, brings the panel back up. So um, arguably a lot more uh, efficient and quicker to launch that, that this panel using that method than to go over to the properties palette. But if you want to do that, there it is there, visibility and graphics override. Hit the edit button and it brings up the palette. Just as with all these instance parameters here at this top level, they are view specific. So everything that we change here is only gonna affect this particular view. The next view property I want to go through is underlay. Now this is best demonstrated through example. So I'm just gonna switch very quickly to a 3D view just to show you my simple model. Now, it's a very simple building. I've got a floor in there with an opening in it. 
So let's um, assume this is a feature light well or an atrium on the first floor. Now, if I go back to my ground floor plan, obviously we can't see that atrium because it's above us. This is where underlay comes into its own. Now, the underlay parameter, if I hit the little drop down, allows you to display in a half tone any of the levels in your model, even if they're above the one you're currently on. So when I hit that little drop down there, there's the list of the levels. I've just got three in this simple model. I'm on level zero, I'm at the, at the ground floor at the moment. But if I choose level one as an underlay, it will actually ghost on in a half tone the level above us. Now this could be really useful if you were, um, for example, wanted to do a, a reception desk under that light well. Without that underlay feature, it would be difficult to actually determine exactly where that atrium was. But now I've got that ghosted on, I can go to component, let's say do a seating arrangement under that light well. And then when I'm finished, just go back to underlay put it back to none and now if we take a very quick look in 3D there we can see our atrium with the seating underneath so you can use that for all sorts of purposes um, laying out service risers uh, maybe putting feature desks under uh, skylights or openings in the roof uh, anything where you need to reference elements that are currently above the level you're viewing The last view property I want to show you in this unit is view range. Now, if we scroll down more towards the bottom of the list of instance parameters or instance properties for each view, you will find for floor plans and reflected ceiling plans, a parameter called view range. And if I hit the edit button, you get a little control panel comes up and there are a number of parameters in here that we can adjust. Now, the next unit after this one is dedicated to looking at this panel and explaining view range in detail. But just to explain the, the, the general principle of it, this is where you control where the model is cut through to generate these floor plans and reflected ceiling plans. So at the moment, the height above the views level, and this is level zero at the moment, at which the model is cut through is the cut plane, and that's currently set at 1700 mil. That means these doors and windows are being cut through because their height falls within that setting there at 1700. However, if I lift that cut plane up to let's say 2150, and apply, you can see that our cut plane is now above the door and window head. The wall is being cut through at this height and we're actually seeing the doors and windows in relief below the section of wall where it's cut through. So if I just very quickly bring up that panel again, view range, so there are some other settings in there and in the next unit we'll go through each of those in detail. So that's all the view properties I want to cover in this unit. You can see that there are a lot more, but some of those we'll cover in later topics. Some are um, a little further down the line when you've got used to Revit, they're for more advanced uses. But the ones I've covered, you're certainly going to be using on a regular basis, if not daily. And that completes this unit. To get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point, you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.
bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.